Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. It's John from the Poi. And I thought I would update you during the course of this little run on a beautiful, gorgeous June morning. It's uh, Sunday, June uh, about 10th. And it's a glorious day in the Poi. So I wanted to kind of show you my running route because it's an amazing place that I live here and some of the highlights along the way. Falmouth Road Race running hat. If you haven't ever had a chance to do that race in Falmouth, it's a seven mile run along Cape Cod. It's just gorgeous. So I wanted to show you some of the sights and sounds maybe of uh, my usual morning run and maybe some other things too along the way. Here's an old house in the village. Uh, most of these homes are sea captain's homes from the 1800s when whaling was a, a big part of the history of Mattapoisin. Uh, this house was built in 1874, which is really one of the newer ones. George H. Purrington at 36 Main Street in Mattapoisin. This actually, this home was uh, featured on um, If Walls Could Talk on HGTV at one point in time when they were remodeling the home. We're about a half mile down the road here is the ocean at Mattapoisin Harbor where the book uh, Moby Dick was some of it was inspired. The ship that uh, uh, Herman Melville rode was called the Akushnet. The Akushnet was built in this harbor. It was a shipbuilding center. And, uh, and it was a whaling center after it moved off in Nantucket and kind of moved to uh, the New Bedford area. Um, Mattapoise became kind of a whaling center. So uh, there's big, beautiful homes in the village here with no garages because the uh, car wasn't invented when these homes were built. So I just want to show you some of the sights and sounds, the beauty of the town and the, uh, the harbor and whatnot. So we'll see what happens along the way. Uh, one of the interesting things about all the homes here is that they have these little uh, plaques on them. Let's see if I can run up here and grab this one. This one, uh, this was built in 1834 and Jeremiah H. Cowing was the sea captain that lived in this boat, in that house. So, um, we can run here a little bit. So the sea captains that lived here in the mid-1800s, um, there, there, there's little plaques on each home that shows the name of the year that they lived there. Maybe it was the year that we, was built, I'm not sure. Some of the homes have been added on to. Most of them are pretty small. Um, you know, considering but they've been added on to and added on to now. But they have a distinctive feel and look. The town itself was incorporated in 1857, which is actually late. This area was called Rochester originally, and it encompassed three towns, Marion, Mattapoisett, and Rochester. They're now three separate towns. So uh, this is our town hall right here, and you can see so pretty. This has actually been a picture that's been on my uh, on my intro for many years. You can see it was incorporated in 1857, but of course the area is much, much older than that. So uh, you can see the water through there. And uh, this is a little compound actually. There's a main house and there's three little smaller shacks cottages um, and uh, look at that this is right on right on the street there's no front yards or anything so uh, pretty flowers that's really neat this one's dated 1826 all right we'll run up to the harbor this is uh one of these old village streets that, uh, you know, look, there's no yards. These houses were built with a dirt road in between. And uh, this one was uh, 1831, Caleb Cannon. You see an old, a lot of old biblical type names. Now some of these places did have like a little uh, shed for a horse, but uh, most of them had either taken that space and expanded their house, or, you know, a few have added on a garage. For the most part, you know, it's just little houses in a 
in the street. Hi, how are you? Good, showing everybody our town. I'm showing everybody our town. <laughs> so, there's pretty much it. Just got redone. And, uh, flowers. And I love seeing the American flags. It just is so Americana and uh, New Englandy to me. So, and as you can see, the water's straight ahead. When I think of New England, this street is exactly what I think of. The water in the distance. harbor area and uh, the center of town, you know, the main, the main gathering spot of the town. I'm going to show you this plaque over here. This, uh, this is a house. It was obviously a sea captain's house. And uh, there's a plaque on the side here. It's hard to make out. Um, wait a minute. There it is. It was born November 3rd. 1846, Francis David Davis Millet, drummer boy, war correspondent, author, uh, illustrator and artist, and uh, the last line, he went down with the Titanic, April 15th, 1912. So uh, this, uh, this was a person that lived and, uh, at the time and died on the Titanic. It's a very interesting area. Um, vacation rentals. <laughs> you know, right across the street from the main town pier. And this is the inn on Shipyard Park. It's, it used to be the Kinsale Inn, if you've been following me. I've talked about this before. It's the oldest bed and breakfast in America. It's uh, 210 years old, about. Give or take, it's getting pretty close. And uh, the reason why I actually started doing this uh, video it was the other day every morning a friend of mine Peter Mello on uh, Peter Mello on uh, Facebook takes a picture of the harbor and posts it whether it's raining snowing no matter what he's doing and this is it this is the area and it's beautiful the gazebo here on every Wednesday night uh, the band the community band comes out and plays and kids play frisbee and jump in the water and just have a real a lot of fun and people bring out their lawn chairs and just hang out here there's a little ice cream slip I don't know why they call it a slip that's what they call it but this is the Manapoisset Harbor people put their boats in it's all dotted with sailboats it's like a fairly low tide there we'll run we'll run past that that just sold uh it's being remodeled now it just sold for 2.6 million which means maybe um maybe the economy is getting a little better but of course with a view like this every morning oh, what, how can you put a price tag on that huh so out in the very far distance is ned's point lighthouse i'm gonna run out there it's about a mile from here i'm sure um, i'm sure we'll stop along the way and see a few other things so, thanks for joining me. It's a nice little bed and breakfast called the Metapoise Inn. They've always got people there. It seems to be pretty successful. And uh, they're doing a couple of remodels here and expanding these homes right here. Sorry, it's so shaky. They're uh, expanding these. And um, it's going to be really nice when they're done. And this home here is the one that just sold right in the water. They've already got a boat in the dock. And uh, this was built in 1902. 1902, I think it says. It's really just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. 
So here's the town beach. Look at that, there's already people out here. This is just our free public little town beach. People fish off that pier there. Um, but it's really it's just a nice spot. Oh, there's a dock there you can jump off of. Especially at high tide. Low tide, it gets a little shallow. Looks like that's closer in this year. Maybe it's just uh, my view. But you know, there's a little ba bath house there, a little shack here. And usually on the weekends, there's somebody selling sodas and stuff like that. So uh, this is the town beach. I hope you're enjoying this little tour of Manapoison. Turn that into a bed and breakfast. That just sold recently too. So, um, this area was uh, a whaling center in the mid 1800s, of course. Building boats, and the captains lived here, hunting whales, and then of course that business died. And the area in around the south coast of Massachusetts. Became an industrial center for textiles. And that's pretty much gone away too. So this has become a summer vacation home area and year round. Um, it goes from about 10,000 year round residents to 45,000 summer residents. But all the summer people, they own the home. There's not a lot of rentals. There's some, but most people uh, own it and therefore they care about the schools. And, taxes and you know the community at large things that happen once in a while when I'm in the mood this is where I can do a little hill workout yeah there's not a lot of hills when you live at sea level but this does go down a little oh, but this is a brand new house it was a little cottage that got torn down and rebuilt this is a little public way here and uh, it's a nice place to get a little bit of hill workout and one of those real hot summer days you can run down here shoes off. Oh, look at the little bunny. Oh, I don't know if you saw him. There he is. He's hiding right there. Hey, bunny. Okay, now I feel like Nigel. <laughs> Over there is that house that sold and uh, the town wharf. You see the flagpole. And uh, it's just a different view of the harbor on our way to This road right here is Ned's Point Road and it's an integral part of the Mattapoisett Five Mile Road Race. It's part of an out and back section and you run down this road and you end up coming back. About a half mile down is Ned's Point Lighthouse and uh, yeah, there's not much to say about it other than to run down there and show you how beautiful it is. It's the most beautiful part of the run. So I'll meet you down there. Now we're at the bend, and you can see the water ahead, so we're about halfway down, but this is the uh, Mattapoisa Boat Yard. In the wintertime, this thing is just piled high with boats of all shapes, sizes, colors, and uh, it's starting to empty out, obviously. You saw a lot of the boats in the harbor, but there's still some here. People working on them and getting them ready for the summer still. Um, certainly by the 4th of July though, so I'll be out in the water, hopefully being enjoyed for a good long summer. Okay, we're almost to the water. It's just beautiful. I uh, previously took some video of this route. Oh, early on, I can't remember what episode it was. But early on it was the dead of winter and uh, it was all snow covered here. And uh, it was beautiful in its own right. But I'll tell you what, we are about to embark on the most beautiful sight. As you come around the bend, that's the water straight ahead. And then you come around this bend and you see the glory of the, uh, go ahead, of the lighthouse there. And, uh, and how beautiful it is. So, uh, this is Ned's Point, Ned's Point Lighthouse. This is kind of the mouth of the harbor here. <laughs> and 
that's back to town there. And there's the youngster. They're looking for crabs. There's all kinds of little crabs. They're hiding in the rocks. So, uh, Says uh, adopted, and that's Point Lighthouse adopted by United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. They run tours of it. You can go up in there. It's a beautiful view um, <coughs> on Wednesday nights. And uh, Wednesdays, I don't know. But during the summer, it's open. You can walk up the spiral staircase and uh, see, look out the lights there. It is a working lighthouse, too. It flashes a big red light on. No, it's not red, it's white. But it's on and off, on and off. It doesn't spin. And if you can see the, if you can see the land across there, it's a little hazy, but that's Falmouth, and that's uh, actually Cape Cod. <laughs> so this is my morning route to Ned's Point Lighthouse. This is uh, two, about two and a half miles to here. So it's usually four and a half to five by the time I get back, depending on the exact route I take. There might be another spot or two I'll show you on the way back. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. I think I'll do another episode or maybe string this together with some, some of my bike trail. Uh, because when I ride my bike, it's, it's also beautiful. So uh, from Ned's Point Road at the lighthouse, you can see more runners coming down. This is a great place to run to. Um, it's John from The Poi. Thanks for joining me on Run New England. And send me feedback at runnewengland.com at gmail.com.